Flux 1.1 Pro has arrived. Let's check it out. Flux 1, the Pro, Dev, and Schnell models are all pretty well known for their realism, quality of image, prompt adherence, and even getting text in the image. Pro, of course, is the high end, Dev is the middle child, and Schnell is the one that focuses on speed. The quality is still good, but it's not exactly Dev or Pro. This is the gallery on the Black Forest Labs website where they're showing us some images that have been created with Flux 1.1 Pro. Holy moly, talk about realistic. Maybe this is the pic you send when you're trying to call off sick for work. I'm seeing some really great things here, but I don't like to get too excited by the gallery because you know that's the best of the best and that's what we would expect. The description from Black Black Forest Labs of Flux 1.1 Pro talks about blazing speeds, top of the line, prompt following, visual quality, image detail, and output diversity. We can use the API or we can try it on free pick, together, foul, or replicate. I'm going to head over to replicate. Looking up top here, sure enough, we are on Flux 1.1 Pro. Let's check out what it's going to cost. It looks like four cents per image. Let's try a group of people smiling and laughing while wearing t-shirts with the text Flux 1.1 Pro. You can make those a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We'll leave everything else the way it is, including the prompt up sampling, but I am going to switch the output format to something other than WebP and hit run. And with a generation time of 18.7 seconds, we have our image. We got a group of people there smiling, having a good time, it looks like. We got flux on the t-shirt. We didn't get the point between the 1, 1 Pro, but other than the missing decimal, it's looking like a really good image. Let's just re-roll the dice, everything the same, and see if we can get that decimal to show up in another generation. 24.3 seconds this time, and it does look like we got our 1.1 Pro on most of these. I think the ones where I don't see it is where it's just sort of covered up or wood wouldn't be in the picture naturally. Let's just try another variation. We'll use the same prompt, the same settings. I'll just hit run again. What I'm trying to accomplish there is that Flux is pretty good generally about dealing with multiple people in one image and not making them all look identical, like the same person, like there's triplets or quadruplets or whatever. Using a group of people also gives us lots of hands and ears and necks and whatnot to check out the anatomy and see how that's coming out. And adding the text, of course, is because Flux has been pretty good with text and I wanted to try something where it's actually incorporated into an element of the image that isn't like straight and flat. This one took 44.6 seconds. We're missing the point in our 1.1. Otherwise, I think the text did pretty good on these shirts as far as conforming to the shapes and whatnot. I don't necessarily see any twins or triplets going on. There's some people that look similar, but it's not like with some generators where as soon as the picture opens, you're like, wow, that's a picture of five of the same person. Now, the fella over here on the right, his right arm and hand appears to be backward, and the fingers on this lady here in the middle are a little goofy. Upscaling might fix that, in painting is another way to fix that, or just re-roll the dice. Let's try out a different prompt here that AI just whipped up for us. Cafe interior, mix of people, different backgrounds, large table, sharing coffee and pastries, conversation, and there's supposed to be a small sign that says, friends gather here, emphasis on warmth and realism. 30 seconds later, this is what we have. We've got a little sign here, I guess. Uh, oh look, they do actually have it hanging. I thought it was just floating there for a minute, but now I see the little ropes. Looks like they're all conversing. Everybody's got their coffee, juice, and food in front of them. I'm not seeing any obvious mistakes, and it looks like it listened to our prompt pretty well. Let's try a wedding ceremony capturing the bridegroom and their guests celebrating joyfully. We got a bride and groom and people, and it looks like a wedding to me. I think the teeth are a little funky. I believe upscaling would probably fix that up just fine. I think it did a great job with the depth of field, with the lighting and shadows. Overall, fantastic looking image. Now let's try an art gallery with some text. This image took 31.9 seconds. It was supposed to have a large canvas with a title in bold letters, Reflections of Us. Everybody looks like they're having a really good time. The only thing I'm seeing is we're lacking a little bit of detail in the faces, particularly around the mouth areas. However, this is a 13 1944 by 768 image and I have it blown up across my screen. At this smaller size it looks pretty good and again I think an upscaler would make this look good in high res without any sweat. Now if you don't want to fool with replicate or you're looking for a place where you can try out Flux 1.1 Pro for free you might want to head over to Glyph. I've talked about Glyph before. It's where you can build these little mini apps. Most of them involve image generation in one way or another. You can do things like create a Glyph that has a step that 
takes in a prompt and then uses a large language model like Claude to enhance the prompt and send it back before it goes off to whichever image generator you want to use. And right now, Glyph gives you 20 free runs a day. Right at this moment, Flux Pro 1.1 is featured on the home page, but when you go to look at this page, that may or may not be the case because they feature different glyphs here. So let's come up here in the top and click on glyphs, and you can either search or you can filter. We can say image generators, but chances are if you scroll down, it might be in one of these featured listings like right here, Flux Pro 1.1, or under image generators in the next section, or you can always come up here and just search for it. Now, if I search something like Flux Pro, there's gonna be a lot of different results here, like Flux Prompt Enhancer, and there may even be multiple results that include Flux 1.1 Pro, because that's the thing about glyphs, is that anybody can build them and use that as part of a multi-step process. I'll go ahead and select the Angry Penguin version, which is the same one that's featured on the homepage. Angry Penguin is pretty well known for his prowess in AI image generation. Got my prompt in there of an ultra-detailed landscape of a bustling city at sunset showcasing reflections in glass building. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Wow, I think it nailed the prompt. You've got the city, you've got the reflection, glass buildings, sunset. I think this is a gorgeous photo. If you wanted to work on this text, maybe at the top of this building, or you wanted this to be in some other language, this text down here, you totally do that either in your prompt or fix it up with some in painting. I switched over to a glyph I made originally using Flux 1 Pro, but I just updated it now to use Flux 1.1 Pro, which reminds me, I need to change this title because I got it kind of backward. There we go, all fixed up. And I'll show you the back end of this glyph while we're here. It starts by taking in the original prompt. That's where you have a text box you type in your prompt and then what it does is it gives these instructions that i've written along with the original prompt that you typed in and sends that over to claude 3.5 sonnet and a system prompt that tells claude it's an ai prompt engineer and that it generates stunning images that are indistinguishable from actual photography blah 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 so it takes the original prompt that was fed in in the blank it sends that prompt along with these pre-written instructions out to claude claude generates a new image generation prompt sends it back that revised prompt is then fed to flux pro 1.1 to generate an image in landscape size and i've already set the steps to 28 and the prompt power to 3.5 which seemed to be working pretty good for me this is a public page for my glyph and if you wanted to copy it borrow and do whatever you want change it however you just click this remix button right up here and get started i've got a prompt in here right now that says a smiling woman holding a sign that reads is this realistic in big bold lettering and flux pro 1.1 in parentheses in medium sized lettering what do we got here well we got a woman we got her holding up something a sign that says is this realistic flux pro 1.1 that is exactly how i describe that large font medium font hand one two three four thumb should be behind and i indeed think it does look realistic we'll go ahead and hit that again and glyph keeps an on going estimate of about how long it takes to run any particular glyph mine it's saying is taking around 23 seconds and sure enough we have another image everything i think that we asked for is in there like we asked for it she might have an extra fingertip growing off her middle finger of her right hand. I don't know. If I look at that too much, it makes me go kind of cross-eyed. But that'd be easy enough to fix. Now we're going to try this prompt, which is a coffee shop menu board displaying various coffee options in a handwritten style. This is leaving a lot to creativity, both for Claude in enhancing the prompt and then for Flux Pro, depending on how well Claude did in interpreting what to put here. There's our menu board. I'm not quite sure I can read the prices. And some of these things I sort of doubt are real things. It looks like maybe it's trying to do the same thing I did on tests in school, where if you don't know the answer, just try and write it in bad enough handwriting that it could be the answer. I'm going to take the same exact prompt back over here to replicate. I'm going to turn off the prompt up sampling. I want to see what happens if that prompt goes directly into Flux 1.1 Pro without any manipulation or enhancement. Now, I don't think I'm necessarily going to be ordering anything off of this menu. When I look around the menu board, it looks very realistic to me. The only thing I have an issue with is what is up here on the menu board, but I kind of thought this prompt was going to be a lot to ask because you're not just giving it text to put somewhere. You're telling it to make up text and a lot of text. An entire menu board is quite a bit to fill in. Let's step away from the text and try to get a hyper-realistic portrait of an elderly woman with deep wrinkles, smiling 
smiling warmly. And 12 and a half seconds later, I think it nailed it. Elderly woman, deep wrinkles, hyper-realistic, smiling warmly. That is a lot of detail. What an incredible image. Earlier I generated this image, which is the futuristic cityscape at night, flying cars, all the normal stuff, and accurate neon signage text. Again, that leaves a lot to creativity. I think it came out pretty well. It seems to have incorporated everything that that prompt asked for, and I don't know how accurate this neon signage text is, because it's not in a language that I speak. So I changed that prompt and where it said futuristic cityscape, I just said futuristic American cityscape. And I can't say that it nailed the accurate text here on the signs, but it did include some signs that at least have letters that I recognize. So here I just asked for a for sale sign and I put for sale in quotes in the front yard of a cozy suburban home in a small town in America. The sign definitely says for sale exactly like I asked it to in the front yard of what I would say passes for a cozy suburban home. I took the quotes off of the words for sale just to see what it would do with that. And here's what we have. Keep in mind that I've been using really short prompts here to generate these images that we're playing around with and flux models can handle longer, much more detailed prompts and usually get most if not all of what you asked for incorporated in there. So the more detail you give it, the less the AI will have to use its own creativity to figure out and you can really specify and get what you want. Hey, I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some image generation using Flux 1.1 Pro, and I hope to see you in the next video.